years ago, I had a deep revelation. I create artificial intelligence, AI, but I'd observed that even how I approach the field was very different compared to most other people in AI. And this started showing in the incredible technology my team and I were able to build. It was off the charts. So that got me wondering, why was my approach different? And the revelation I had was this. Unlike most people in AI, when I'm building artificial intelligence, I carry the burden of a post-nuclear physicist. You see, my field, physics, has seen some of its greatest breakthroughs result in some of our greatest tragedies, the nuclear bomb. So, in fact, when Einstein, who was the first to write to President Roosevelt, alerting the president about the presence of this incredible nuclear energy and its potential use as a weapon, he spent the rest of his life regretting his contribution to the bomb and working against it. So unlike most people in AI, when I'm building AI or quantum or biotech, I dwell in these really difficult questions. And this contrast I live in, right, incredible technology, amazing potential for advancing our society, but also potential great tragedies, well, this contrast allows me to see what's missing in our current society. We have lost the link between physics and philosophy. And this matters on a very, very practical level. This is not just an academic question, because now it's extended to the disconnect between technology and all of us humans. To show you what I mean, let me take you back to 1666. A massive plague has just swept through England, and one of the most distinguished philosophers of the time has to leave Cambridge, and he goes to his beautiful country house. One day he's sitting in his gardens, thinking about the kinds of questions, you know, philosophers think about. Who are we? Why are we here? Where are we? when this happens. Millions of us have seen an apple fall. We all literally just did. But Isaac Newton's profound genius was that he connected this to the fact that the laws of Earth are the same as the laws of the heavenly bodies. Now, this causes a ripple effect through society. It starts shifting how people think. In fact, it causes a controversy because the implications are this, that the laws of man are the same as the laws of God. Whoa. Now, not only does it subtly begin to shift how people think, but it also causes an advancement in society. You see, from Isaac Newton's discovery, gravity, we now have rockets. We design rockets, we go to the moon, we explore space, we have satellites that power all our cell phones, we can chat, right? That is the power of scientific breakthroughs when they're rooted in philosophy, when they're rooted in questions that matter to us. And you see this, in fact, every technological and scientific breakthroughs, when they're rooted in such strong values and such strong directions, you see them causing a ripple effect through society. In fact, we can trace through all of our breakthroughs from the question, what is life? What is life? Watson and Creek come up with the structure of the DNA. Now, from that, today we have the genetic code. And we're, in fact, talking about changing our very genetic makeup. From the question, can machines think? Alan Turing comes up with artificial intelligence, which today holds the potential to really advance our society and shift us into a new civilization. Now, this link seems to have broken, and it's showing up in the types of technology we're building today. Now, 
to see where this link really comes from, right? We see that technology, what we build, is just applied science. So from gravity, we came up with rockets. But what I've just told you with the Newton story is that technology, which is applied science, but science is applied philosophy. So from the Newton story, we see the technology, what we're building, is nothing but applied, applied philosophy. So when this link, the first link, is broken, that extends all the way to what we're building. Case in point, Facebook. About two years ago, Facebook divided all of its users, all of us, into two groups. The one that they call the negative feed, let's say you were part of that group, well, all you were exposed to every day, in and out, was extremely negative, down, depressing stories. So stories of, say, people losing a loved one, or dealing with cancer, or anxiety, stress in life, just wondering what is going on. Well, the other group, picture your friend. Your friend is constantly exposed to wonderful stories, the positive feed. So he is only seeing amazing vacations, kids rocking it in school, fancy cars, I mean, you name it. Think of Instagram, right? And now this has profound psychological consequences on our states, right? Because you and I, in the negative feed, we're wondering, well, what is wrong with the world? What is going on? Why is it so down and depressing all the time? Because subtly, what we're exposed to this digital world influences what we think of our surroundings. Whereas our friends, they're wondering, what is wrong with me? That I'm only, not only seeing happy things happen to me all the time, I have this mixture and happy things don't happen to me, you know, as often as they seem to happen to other people. So this profound psychological manipulation has severe consequences on our individual psychological states. Now, we have regulations in place for this. Any time anyone does massive social experimentation on humans, you have to go through a bunch of approvals. There are checks and balances in place. But Facebook was simply trying to man maximize one variable, time spent on page. Social consequences, your emotional state, my emotional state, be damned. This is what happens when what we are building no longer is connected to the questions that matter to us. It seems that when technology left the humanities, it left humanity. We can ask, when did this link shatter? And you can literally see it happening during the lifetime of Einstein. Two world wars can sever a lot of links, and apparently our technological link with questions that matter was one of the collateral damage. And what happens is, during Einstein's lifetime, you see him, who heavily, heavily drew from the humanities, you see him counseling thousands of other scientists and technologists to go back to the questions of philosophy, of ethics, and ask the big, difficult questions that matter to us. Here's a direct quote. He says, everything can be explained scientifically, but it would be without any meaning. As though you're describing a beautiful Beethoven symphony in terms of variation in wave pressure. <laughs> Almost all the technology that's being created out there today is without meaning. It's just a dance of wave pressure. And this is why part of the reason we're facing the anxiety, the confusion, and the disconnect with the world that we face today. Now imagine, what if we were to bring this link back together? What would that look like? What if we were to move away from, say, coming up with drugs that only target symptoms to actually eliminating disease or reversing disease, right? I mean, these, these are the kinds of questions that made people come up with the concept of vaccination in the first place. The kinds of questions we ask and the route and the approach we take direct what we build. 
So what I want to share with you today is this, this habit of asking both the big questions, but also the everyday small difficult questions. You know, what if all of us, even the managers, the engineers at Facebook, but also project managers, whatever your role is, users, we ask, hey, how will this affect our users? How will this affect people? Should we care? Doesn't that matter? And we cannot shy away from these questions because they've become too difficult, or it's impolite, or that it's not practical in today's world. Because ethics, ethics, when we're faced with the power of artificial intelligence, quantum, biotech, and neurotech, ethics cannot be top down. It cannot be a regulatory slap on top because that tends to be retrospective. Ethics needs to be bottom up. It needs to become a habit of our society. Because in the end, it's like this. Historically, our greatest technologists, Newton, Kepler, Galileo, we used to call them natural philosophers. That's how strong this link was between technology, philosophy, humanities. It was all one thing. Well, and the world we live in today is better because of how they approached what they built. So I want to ask you, can you start asking yourself, no matter what you're doing, are you doing this for incremental gains? Or are you doing this to benefit your friends, their children, and my community? Thank you. <laughs>